you believe success is a matter of hard work or is there a bit of luck involved? What if you could design your own luck? In today's episode of the Happy Accidents podcast, we're diving deep into the minds of four incredible people, John Knotts, Jay Klaus, Adam Tank, and Matt Watkinson, to explore how they each define the role of luck in success. Prepare to challenge your thinking as we uncover the surprising commonalities and the sharp differences in their views on what it really takes to make it big. In this episode, you'll learn why one of our guests believes luck is something you can plan, how another thinks belief only can drive success, and why one entrepreneur considers chance encounters as the key to breaking through. Stay tuned to discover the hidden forces that could be shaping your own success story right now, whether you realize it or not. Hey friends, I'm Dennis Geelan, author of The Accidental Solopreneur. Welcome to the Happy Accidents Podcast, where we dive into real stories of unexpected success, from chance encounters in everyday life to the serendipitous moments that shaped thriving businesses. Each episode uncovers surprising events that anyone can learn from. Let's jump into today's adventure. So John Knotts, Jay Close, Adam Tank, and Matt Watkinson. Four people who have been guests on the Happy Accidents podcast previously. So this episode is a bit of a compilation slash retrospective uh, where I'm going to go back and take a look at what each of these guys had to say, what their viewpoint was on how chance, luck, randomness, serendipity plays a role in success. We're going to hear from them exactly what they said on those episodes and then I'm just going to dive in and, and look at what are the differences between their beliefs and what are the similarities. If you're interested, you can find the links to each of those original episodes in the show notes. So go back, um, review their stories and how luck or chance or serendipity played a role in their own lives and their own journey. So let's begin with John Knotts, who believes that luck isn't entirely random. It can be planned for. In fact, for, for John, success is about preparing yourself and taking the right actions so that when opportunity knocks, you're ready to answer. He focuses on how we can actively create circumstances that attract luck, a concept that aligns with the idea of maximizing our luck surface area. Let's listen in. I'm going to take a left turn for a second. And then we're going to come back to you and your story, because what I want to do now is I want to bring up this post that you wrote on, on LinkedIn uh, a week or two ago. And I'm going to read it because right. it's going to frame the rest of our discussion um, <laughs> where we're going to be diving into luck and your view on luck and how it has played a role in your journey and for the people that you consult. So let me just, I'm going to, I'm going to read this for the audience and I'll, I'll put a link to the actual post in the show notes as well. If anybody wants to go and read it and like it and engage in it uh, as well. So here it is. Uh, this is how you start off. Do you think you're lucky? What is luck? Luck is a result occurring by chance rather than through one's own actions, but we can't control chance, right? You know that luck is actually both good and bad, right? Look back over your last seven days. Make a list of 10 major things that's happened over those days. This first time you try to make this exercise, you might find it hard to make a list of 10 things, but over time, you're going to find it easier and easier to find 10 things. In fact, you'll probably have difficulty keeping it to just 10 things after a while. And then for each of your 10 items on your list, identify if it was a good thing or a bad thing. From your perspective, how did it rate? Then consider if this was something you planned to happen, meaning you were making an effort for it to occur, or was it unplanned? For instance, and then you give an example here, a dinner out with friends could have been planned a few weeks ago. A tire blowing out on your car probably wasn't a planned occurrence. What was the result of each of these 10 items, good or bad? And then you say, let me share one of my 10 items from last week. My wife and I went out to dinner at a newish wine restaurant that's about 15 minutes from our farm. I've been wanting to try it for a while now. However, it was a last minute decision to go out to dinner and to pick this place. 
Their food and wine was simple, but pretty good. But the atmosphere, the weather was fantastic. We sat at a table amongst the grapevines and listened to a musician who was really quite good. It was an enjoyable evening, a success. But was it planned? No, not really. The dinner was last minute, but it is some place that I've been thinking about trying fruit for a while. Was the result positive? Yes, but it was just easily could not have been. Were we lucky? Yes, but in a good way. But did I have a hand in that luck? Was it just random or was it planned luck? And then you give a shout out to the place. For those interested, the place is called Contrada Vineyard and Kitchen. And then you go on to say, through my continuously examining my past weeks, I'm able to recognize more and more the successful things that occur and why. This allows me to plan things more and more and even create instances of planned luck. We can't control chance, but we can create instances where chance can be more favorable to us. So I thought that was super interesting. Obviously, that's a, a topic that I dive into every week here on the podcast and, and in the newsletter. And now I want to use that to go back and talk about your journey that we've been going through here and uh, your, your take on that. So first of all, um, you shared with us your story. You originally were into photography, then you got into computers, kind Still of flunked into, out of that. Photography. <laughs> right. But didn't it. work out as, as a career as your original aspiration was. Um, kind of fell into the Air Force because you couldn't get into uh, other military areas at the time. Kind of fell into this job of, of teaching the quality because you just happened to be the only guy with the qualifications at, at the time. You had the algebra test waived for you. Like this was a series of events that led to you getting to do this job that then gave you all these skill sets strategy, planning, operations, uh, operational efficiencies that you now consult on. It was like a series of happy accidents that got you here. Now for a different take, we have Jay Klaus. Jay was a previous um, guest on the Happy Accidents podcast. If you're not familiar with Jay, he is the founder of Creator Science, which is a podcast for creators that uh, where he interviews other creators and he gives advice on how to create mostly um uh, video content. Um, he is the founder of The Lab, which is a community where creators come together to collaborate, share ideas, and incubate new ideas. Uh, he has a newsletter. He has quite a following on social media, and uh, his business brings in close to seven figures every year. So I was excited to have him on the podcast, hear his story, and get his take on the role that luck plays in success. And for Jay... Luck plays a role, he says, but belief in oneself and consistent effort are what truly drive success. He highlights that those who accomplish great things often do so because they believe they can, which leads them to take action. Luck, in Jay's mind, isn't so much something that you chase after, but something you encounter when you're putting in the work. Let's listen in. Do you have a, a take on that? I know this is a bit of a deep subject but do you have a take like do you feel like hey i was destined to to do what i'm doing now or has it just been a bunch of random events that have led you here i don't really believe in uh any type of predetermination because i think that would be an oppressive way of living if you believe that mm -hmm. things were predetermined uh but i do believe that belief is the strongest force on the planet like if you if you watch documentaries with stars like charlie's theron or athletes or even uh like business success good or bad like we have these we have these incredible stories about we work and like the fraud that was happening there or the theranos stuff uh fire fest like those are bad outcomes but remarkable events and there's a through line to all these things which is the people at the center of those events believed they could do the thing if you believe you can do the thing you can do the thing if you don't believe you can do the thing you're not going to do it so i i think in these circumstances when you believe that you can achieve a certain thing you are more likely 
to take the actions and put yourself in the position where that becomes possible. Um, that's, that's my belief. Hey there, real quick. Listen, I really hope you're enjoying this episode of the podcast. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, do me a favor and give it a rating and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss an episode. If you're watching on YouTube, hey, give this video a like, send me your thoughts in the comments and make sure you're subscribed here as well. Okay, back to the show. Next, we have Adam Tank, author of the book Luck by Design. His philosophy ties closely with John Knott's. Adam's view is that luck can be designed. He advocates for creating serendipity by being intentional about meeting people, testing ideas, and staying open with possibilities. Might sound familiar. That's very closely in line, but I uh, like to preach as well. For him, success is about expanding your network and ideas in ways that allow chance encounters to bring about new opportunities. Much like John, Adam believes luck favors the prepared. Let's see what he has to say. One thing I want to dive in a little bit with you is there's a, there's another book by another author that just came out earlier this year called Fluke. Okay. And the author's name is Brian Kloss. And he kind of subscribes to the theory that this is all just fluke. This is all just mm -hmm. random. Mm -hmm. And what I would call happy accident, what would you you would call a catalyst, he calls a contingent event. Okay. And he says, basically, every single thing that happens throughout the day are potential contingent events that could set your life on a completely different trajectory, some big way, some small way. And he kind of frames it as there's two worldviews. There's the worldview of convergence saying uh, or believing you're destined to be what you are. This person was born to be a movie star. This person was destined to be the next, you know, big rock singer. This person was destined to be the next scientist. And things are going to uh, uh, happen and your life is going to converge in that in that way. The other school of thought or the other worldview is no, no. Everything is just a contingent event and things that happen to us just happen to take us in certain directory or mm -hmm. uh, certain trajectories. Mm hmm. We didn't plan it that way, you know, God or the universe was not ha having this plan in mind for us. It was all these little decisions or accidental things that happened to us that took us in that direction. Do you land in one of those camps or somewhere in the middle or with, with everything that you've kind of looked into, what, what's your thinking on convergence versus contingency? Yeah, I would say that the, that what I... So what I believed before I wrote the book, and then certainly what I believe now, having looked at the the research, the science behind these things, is that you call them contingent events, call them happy accidents, call them catalysts. These, I would agree with Klaus that these things happen all the time. And the reason that they happen all the time is because this is the only way that life continues as we know it. So life is contingent upon growth. It's contingent upon change. It's contingent upon, um, call it randomness. Where I land on the convergence component is that it's up to us then to choose what to do with these moments when they happen. So we can't control the moments that happen, but we can control a response to these moments. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know that I would subscribe to the fact that this person was always meant to be a movie star. But most definitely, if you put yourself in a position to become one, and then one of these happy accidents or catalysts happen to you that you then take advantage of to further your your efforts or further your aims, then you're in a much better position to then become a movie star. Finally, we have Matt Watkinson, a best-selling author of three books, most recently, Mastering Uncertainty. This is one that I have recommended to several different people in the business area who need to better understand how to deal with that unknown and that uncertainty that is inevitable in business. Matt brings a broader perspective, one rooted in acknowledging that randomness and uncertainty are constraints and constants in life. Matt doesn't shy away from the unpredictable. Instead, he embraces it. 
His view diverges slightly from the others because he suggests that we cannot control or plan for everything, but by understanding and accepting uncertainty, we can position ourselves to benefit from unexpected moments of luck. Let's hear from Matt. There are a lot of people on the earth and there's a lot of moving parts. And, um, you know, the, uh, people say everything happens for a reason, but it's just as plausible that everything happens for no reason. Right. <laughs> and, and, yep. and it's up to us to find meaning in the events that happened. Right. Rather than that the events are inherently meaningful. Yep. It's up for us to be alert to what the meaning could be in an event for us personally. Um, and it's also, yeah, I guess when you become attuned to this uncertainty and, and serendipity and randomness. Yeah. And and actually, let me just put a pin in that for a second. I think most people think of, and this was a kind of profound realization from for me, um, I think most people think of uncertainty and randomness as having a negative valence, right? They think of these as, mm. as bad, bad things, but it's just as plausible that they're good things as they are bad things, because all the good things that happened in your life had an element of the winds of fortune blowing in your favor, right? Yep. And or an element of serendipity or, or or anything like that um, as, as well. So I guess the, the the question becomes, okay, we we accept the uncertainty now. So what? Like, what are the pragmatics? How do we make exactly. it in our yeah in our favor, right? And and I think that's yeah. that's where it gets really interesting for me because that is in fact that is possible. So the common thread through all these perspectives is the recognition that luck does play a role, but none of these entrepreneurs or authors are passive about it. They each believe in taking action, whether it's through planning, belief, expanding your network or embracing uncertainty. The differences lie in how much control they think we can exert over luck. For John and Adam, they lean towards the idea of actively creating lucky circumstances while Jay emphasizes belief-driven action, and Matt advocates for leaning into uncertainty with eyes wide open. Each of their perspectives as a unique layer to the conversation about success and luck, giving us a more holistic view of how serendipity can be both designed and embraced. The question remains, how will you position yourself to find luck? Hey. Thanks for tuning into the Happy Accidents podcast. I hope you find these stories as intriguing and insightful as I do. But make sure you don't miss an episode. You can subscribe to my Accidental Solopreneur channel on YouTube and watch these episodes in video form, or subscribe to the Happy Accidents podcast on Apple and Spotify for your listening pleasure. Until next time, stay lucky, my friends.